Elon Musk's dream of colonizing Mars is almost within reach for SpaceX, but SpaceX's CEO recently revealed that they have a new problem with Mars. So what could it be? To find out, you'd better stay tuned in this video. Welcome to Elon Musk Rewind. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like this video, and hit the notification bell icon to get updated with Tesla, SpaceX, Starlink, and everything about Elon Musk. It's no secret that several tech billionaires have expressed interest in colonizing Mars in recent years. But it's also well known that creating a sustainable and permanent food source is critical for humans to live on the red planet. This is because humans cannot survive without food and water, either for relatively short periods of time or certainly not for the long periods needed to qualify as a civilization. For instance, just the transmission of spacecraft to provide prepackaged food is not sufficient. In addition to this, the trip to Mars itself takes between six to nine months, including the return trip. Packing enough food to last that long is not an easy task. In fact, it would take at least decades for a civilization to be established on the planet itself. Furthermore, the agricultural revolution marked the transition from hunter-gatherer to flourishing civilizations in human history. As we settle down into farms and agriculture, we began to rely less on hunting and more on farming. It's therefore of utmost importance that Mars has a viable civilization that uses space farms. As seen in the movie The Martian, Mark Watney can barely survive by eating farm potatoes grown in Martian dirt fertilized with feces in the habitat. Despite the obvious challenges posed by this mission, growing crops on Mars is a viable prospect in the long run. As low gravity makes distributing water difficult, deprives roots of oxygen, as well as stagnant air, and reduces evaporation while increasing leaf temperatures. In fact, Wageningen University and Research in the Netherlands conducted a study that grew 10 different crops in lunar and Martian soils, simulating regolith on Mars, which is made up of inorganic material covering the rock below. Unlike soil on Earth, which is lacking organic matter on Mars, regolith is crushed volcanic rock without organic matter. However, only 9 of the 10 plants grew. The spinach wasn't one of them. And from these plants, they harvested edible vegetables, including quinoa, radishes, and tomatoes. Moreover, some researchers have simulated growing crops on the surface of Mars, including garden cresses, arugula, and chives. Radishes, garden cress, and rye could also be grown from seeds, according to the study. Because plants can't grow in the outdoor Mars environment, they must be grown inside, along with the difficulty of watering them due to the lack of gravity. This is because there on Mars, it would simply move over the surface rather than be absorbed by the soil. Simon Gilroy, a botanist studying how gravity affects planet growth at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, explains some important concepts. According to the researchers, humankind would be able to feed itself on Mars through insect farming and cellular agriculture. In order for the vegetables to be grown on Mars, it's necessary to send seeds and agricultural equipment from Earth. In the study, it was demonstrated that vegetables themselves can grow on the planet's regolith. And to make this a reality, first, we must transport the crops to the International Space Station to perform tests and record the promising results. Lettuce has been selected by the European Space Agency as a good option for growing in space, since it grows quickly and improves research. Conversely, lettuce is one of the least nutritional crops, so researchers recommend growing it with Acropolis beans that have higher protein levels and nutritional value. But wait, there's more to that. For astronauts, maintaining stamina as well as maintaining a balanced diet is particularly important. To make sure that the plants grow properly, researchers suggest placing them in a centrifuge above the International Space Station. Meanwhile, many researchers have suggested a hydroponic system in which plants are grown without soil, but rather by using water as a medium. The problem with this solution, however, is the difficulty in mixing hydroponic solutions in the same manner as they do in space. And to compare, the different densities and weights of water cannot segregate cold and warm water like their earthly counterpart. As a result, when the lettuce roots ingest the oxygen from the liquid-based solution, they become depleted of oxygen. In principle, you could solve this by blowing air through the solution. However, due to the physical constraints, this is impossible. As a result, by generating a certain amount of gravity, a centrifuge helps solve this problem. By doing so, astronauts are able to operate the system just like they would on Earth. As is unsurprising again, this solution may only be useful in a controlled test environment with small controlled experiments. 
there's not enough centrifuge space to operate a farm on Mars with enough crops to feed everyone who could possibly inhabit the planet. Moreover, increasing the centrifuge's size would present a host of engineering challenges. It's nonetheless a promising possibility for improving food production. Despite not being the most effective method of growing plants on Mars, they could still prove vital to conducting trials with planets on the International Space Station. These experiments allowed us to gain insight into the growth of crops and partial gravity levels in space through the measurement of these parameters. A team of University of Villanova astrobiology students has conducted a study of Martian gardens to explore which crops can survive using a synthetic soil designed to mimic Martian soil, known as Martian Soil Stimulant, or MSS. However, the simulant is often denser because it's based on a volcanic rock found in the Mojave Desert. A total of 45 plant species have been tested since the program was launched in 2017, and these include hops and barley. Moreover, control plants are also present, which are grown in potting mix in the same conditions as these plants. Meanwhile, perchlorates, a hazardous chemical found in Martian soil, pose a danger to humans, especially if they are consumed accidentally. That's why using this chemical for harvesting crops on Mars requires first removing it from the soil. One of the challenges of successfully farming crops has to do with getting enough sunlight, according to the Villanova students. With this, the lack of sunlight on Mars causes plants to grow more slowly and may not reach their full potential. As part of the Villanova project, all of Mars's environmental conditions were deemed to be replicated. However, how habitable do we consider Mars to be for humans and plants? It's certainly not the most comfortable place to inhabit for either. It is colder and more desolate on Mars compared to Earth, and because of its frigidity, plants can't survive. In fact, the film The Martian illustrates this perfectly when Mark Watney accidentally exposes his potato plants to the Martian atmosphere, causing them to freeze to death in an instant. At its maximum intensity, its sunlight is around 43 times as intense as that on Earth, and its atmosphere is approximately 190th as dense as Earth's. So on a positive note, beneficial gases such as carbon dioxide and nitrogen account for 95% and 2.6% of the Earth's atmosphere respectively. However, the same atmosphere doesn't contain any ozone, so greenhouse windows must be able to prevent harmful ultraviolet sunlight from entering the greenhouse. Moreover, Mars has no surface water, though there are several lakes beneath its surface and in its polar regions. Simply put, the environmental conditions make it impossible to grow plants in a greenhouse without controlled humidity and water levels. According to the Villanova study, there were two key ways in which the success rate was improved. In the first place, by increasing sunlight intensity using multi-wave LEDs, and secondly, by adding soil or earthworm excrement to loosen the dense soil on Mars. The conditions on Mars, despite these measures, do not favor the growth of some popular plants, such as tomatoes, beans, legumes, corn, and several root plants such as carrots and potatoes, which often grow stunted when given soil stimulants. And according to the students at Villanova, dandelions would thrive on Mars. Fortunately, they have many advantages as vegetables since they are fast-growing, have all edible parts, and are nutritionally dense. Some other plants that are also suited to Mars include kale, onions, garlic, peas, microgreens, lettuce, arugula, and spinach. So far, the research studies have indicated that crops might be able to grow on the surface of Mars. In fact, the NASA-endorsed regolith stimulants could be purchased and used for personal experimentation by anyone. As far as the material that mimics Mars soil mentioned a while ago, the research presented today are only a few of the highlights. Meanwhile, it's not possible to find stupid solutions to the problem of growing plants on Mars. It's also been suggested that people use purified human urine as fertilizer or collect pollinators on Mars. Mars' hostile environment can also prove beneficial for growing crops on the red planet because, by freeze-drying human waste, it's able to eliminate all pathogens present in it, which can be used as fertilizer. So how do you see the first settlers farming on Mars in the face of all the challenges we face on the road to colonizing it? Let us know in the comments below. That's all for this video about Elon Musk's SpaceX, and thank you for watching. If you'd like to receive updates about him, make sure you click the subscribe and bell icon.